Greetings out there in YouTube land. It's been a while since Rusty and I have posted a video and I hope this one is worth the wait. Uh, I'm going to address uh, a concept that was presented in a previous video, the one about how amplifiers work the power supply. Now, in that video I presented a very, very simplistic view of what alternating current looks like. I showed that it was plus 60 volts AC up here and minus 60 volts AC down here. Uh, and I got uh, some negative comments and some argument about it, and they're right. This is really not the way alternating current works. I did it this way because this was a small part of that video and I didn't want to uh, start out with anything overly complex. Now though that that video uh, has been uh, watched and I hope uh, understood by a lot of viewers, let's go back and clarify uh, this overly simplistic concept. Okay, up here at the top I have the way I showed it in the video plus 60 volts AC minus 60 volts AC. This would be closer to the truth plus 120 volts AC here, minus 120 volts AC here, and the peak to peak not, is not 120 volts as I showed in the video, but 240 volts in this particular graph. But even this graph is really not correct. Uh, and the reality is going to be quite alien to a bunch of you. So pull up a chair, take a couple of Valium, and get ready to hear something that's going to boggle your mind, maybe. Uh, and that is, this is reality. Believe it or not, what's coming in from your wall outlet, especially here in the United States, uh, has a, uh, a peak to peak voltage of 339.5 volts AC. It's plus 169.7, minus 169.7. Now I know this flies in the face of everything that you've been led to understand, but this is true. And if this uh, kind of catches your fancy and you're wondering how in heck this can be true, when all along we thought this was correct, just stay tuned and I'll try to explain it. You ready to get started on that new video? Huh? You really anxious? It's a great topic. You picked it. Come on. Okay, uh, to begin our explanation of how this can be, we need to introduce a new term, and that's RMS voltage. You may have heard of it before. I'm going to explain it to you, hopefully, in a way that will be just fully understandable. Okay, uh, the peak AC voltage, which was the 169.7 volts positive and negative that comes from the wall socket, is attainable only momentarily. It's not an accurate measurement of how much work can actually be done. Now, let's, I'm going to use one of my goofy analogies here. Okay, say I, uh, I work on a farm and I need to hire people to load hay bales into a truck. What would be the best question to ask them? What is the absolute heaviest weight that you can lift one time a day into a truck? Or, what is the heaviest weight that you can lift all day and load into a truck? Wouldn't it make more sense to get the all-day figure so that you'd know what kind of work this person can do for you? Well, the 169.7 volt AC peak value is the absolute maximum voltage that can come out of the wall, but that is not what you can rely upon for the work, either from your electric motor or from your amplifier or anything else of that sort. We instead use RMS voltage. Now, RMS AC voltage is a much more accurate measurement of how much work can be done over a usable period of time. Let's face it, you're not going to flip on your amplifier and play for one-tenth of a second and then flip it off, okay? You might have been able to get uh, a peak voltage during that one-tenth of a second, but if you want to play for an hour or two, we need to know the RMS voltage or the usable uh, working voltage that the amp will, will use. Now, what RMS is, is this is alternating current, but how much of this alternating current do we need 
to have it be or do the same amount of work as if we used direct current. Okay, so whether we use alternating or direct, uh, we need to have the same amount of work done. Okay, it's calculated, RMS is calculated from the peak voltage uh, by a statistical method that I will not go into, and I know you're breathing a sigh of relief. It's called the root mean square, and we use the RMS to describe the statistically derived value that will tell you the voltage that will come from the wall socket or from the amplifier, uh, from the output transformer, that you can actually use to do work. Here's some more facts about RMS voltage, and that is, it is the value measured by most AC voltmeters. If you clip your voltmeter onto the, uh, a wall socket somewhere, it's going to read 121 volts. It's not going to uh, read that peak that uh, I've been telling you, the 169.7. It's not going to say that because they're calibrated to give you the RMS value. Secondly, when we do Ohm's law calculations, which are the by far the most commonly used formulas in electronics, you use RMS voltage values when you're talking about alternating current. You do not use the peak uh, voltage values. And here's the relationship between peak voltage and RMS. It, uh, RMS is equal to either you either multiply the peak voltage by 0 0.707, which brings it down because that's a less than one, or you divide it by 1.414. Now some of you are going to see that that is the square root of two, and that all has to do with how the root mean square is derived. Just trust me, accept these numbers. You either multiply by 0 0.707 or you divide by 1.414. Okay, now let's apply this knowledge to the bottom of those three graphs that I showed you initially. Uh, here it is. Uh, the peak voltage positive is 169.7 volts AC. Peak voltage negative is minus 169.7 volts AC. Uh, if we multiply the 169.7 value times 0 0.707, we end up with 120 volts uh, AC RMS, which is uh, designated here by the dotted lines. And uh, we can also divide the 169.7 by 1.414. Either way, we get the same RMS values and the peak to peak which was 339.5 volts AC times 0 0.707 means that we now have a 240 volt peak to peak uh, voltage uh, at RMS plus 120 and minus 120. A logical question at this point would be why the peak voltage cannot perform this amount of work. Why do we have to reduce it down to the RMS value to find out how much work can actually be done? The amount of work that is equivalent to an equal amount of direct current. What is there about the peak voltage that uh, makes it incapable of performing the full amount of work that it should? And to understand that, let's take a look at the difference between the sine wave of alternating current and the straight line of direct current. This is plus 120 volts of direct current. Up here we have uh, an alternating current sine wave and if we rectify it using either a rectifier tube or diodes uh, and put the lower negative waveforms up above you notice that we'll have a nice line of positive waveforms. But the problem is, see the little gap right here? We have to find a way to fill in that gap because we want this bottom rectangle here to be full without any missing parts, just like it is down here for the direct current. So the way it's done is you take the peaks away and use them to fill in the valleys. So in each case the 
peak here can be removed, a certain area of it, and used to fill in the gaps. And the root mean square calculation calculates how far down you have to go, how much peak it will take to fill in the gaps. And the number that we came up with uh, with a sine wave like this is 0 0.707. Those who watch the rectification video uh, will see this is a lot like what the filter capacitors are doing, where they're eliminating part of uh, the wave and using it to fill in the gap to give us the smooth, ripple-free uh, direct current that we need for our amplifier. Okay, so uh, the RMS uh, calculation uh, does this arithmetically, and the filter capacitors do it elect electrically. Now, like I said, we can apply this knowledge not just to understanding wall current, uh, the wall receptacle uh, in our house or workshop, but it also can be applied to the output power ratings of amplifiers. Remember that the signal that comes out of the amp is a sine wave, okay, and it has a peak and trough value. Now, uh, manufacturers can calculate the power rating of amplifiers based either on the peak or the RMS voltage output. Now if they use the peak output, we've already seen that is not sustainable. Yes, that amp may be able to put out a 50 volt peak uh, for a split second, but it can't do it for any length of time. The peak output we'll see is about double the RMS output. Now, as you can see, any manufacturer that wants to charge a lot for an amp, what do you think he's going to use? He's going to use, well, I mean, and it's really not particularly scrupulous to do this, but if you can use the peak voltage, you're, you can sell your amp as being a 100 watt peak output amp, and people will pay a lot of money for it. Whereas the honest amp builder that puts out his uh, power ratings as RMS output, will use the RMS voltage value, which, which when you look at the output uh, signal from the output transformer, it's 0 0.707 what, times whatever the peak voltage is, and you'll get the RMS output, and that amp can put out, if this was 100 watts peak, this will be about a 50 watt RMS amp, it can put out 50 watts all day long. If you buy this amp thinking you're going to get a 100 watt output all day long, no, you're never probably ever going to get a 100 watt output except for a split second. The 50 watt RMS output is the usable, sustainable output power of the amp. I'm going to show you a little slide here in a minute in which we're going to talk about four different ways to rate amplifiers, but let's see why it's double. Remember the number is 0 0.707, right, that you're using to reduce your peak to your RMS. Well, let's do a calculation using peak voltage. Okay, this is the same amp, and we're going to use the RMS output voltage. Peak output volts from Mr. Unscrupulous is 24 volts. On the oscilloscope, he saw a 24 volt peak one time, so he says, I'm going to use that 24 volts. The current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. It's an 8 ohm speaker. 24 volts divided by 8 ohms, 3 amps. The power output, I squared, which is the current squared, times the resistance. 3 squared is 9 times 8. Wow, I've got a 72 watt amp, says this gentleman. Somebody down the street, though, says, you know, I'm going to really play it square with my customers, and I'm going to report my uh, power ratings in RMS output. So, he says, yes, I got a 24 volt peak, but I'm going to multiply it times 0.707 to get the RMS peak, which is 16.97 volts. And I feed it into the equation here where I divide the 16.97 by 8 ohms. 2.121 amps, notice that it is lower. It's more than half, but it's lower. But here's where the, the peculiarity, math peculiarity takes place. When we do the power, we square the 2.121 and multiply it times 8 ohms and we get 
36 watts, exactly half the rating that this man put on his amp. So you've got to be really careful when you're accepting the power ratings on an amplifier. You've got to know whether they used RMS output or whether they used peak output. Which leads us here to our final slide and that is uh, different types of amp power ratings. Okay, most amps that I see, they just say how many watts. They're, it's very vague. They're not telling you whether they use peak or RMS voltage to determine that. And they're sure not telling you for how long. Okay, so this is as ambiguous as it can be. Then they can just be honest and say, well, I use peak watts. I mean, I'm completely unscrupulous and totally misleading, but at least I admit it, I use peak watts. I use the peak voltage when I calculate it, just like uh, I did in the, the previous slide. And yeah, it looks impressive, but it's actually twice the functional output power of the amp, the RMS power. Okay, so if you see peak watts, mentally divide that value by two, and you'll have the RMS watts. Much more accurate, but to be honest, we don't know for how long. 30 minutes? An hour? Um, yes, it's a much longer time than the peak watts, but it would be nice to have some uh, statement here about if this is going to put out this type of wattage for an hour, a day, whatever. I need to know. So the ultimate in accurate um, amp power ratings would be RMS continuous watts. This is the most accurate. What that means is they have run this amp, they've gotten uh, whatever the wattage rating is in RMS out of it, and they've gotten it for hours and hours without any component failure. Okay, so this one has really been uh, put through its paces, and this amp is, say you're going to uh, perform on the road and you need uh, to know exactly uh, how long your amp can put out this type of power, this would be the best possible uh, type of power rating, the most accurate for you. Well, that about does it for this video. I tried to sort of enlarge and clarify the uh, issue of what alternating current looks like and how can we evaluate it as far as its usage in our amp and also the output of the amplifier. Uh, in my first video, I was trying to keep things very basic. I had to pass over this fairly quickly, so I made it just as simple as I could. I think if I'd started that video trying to uh, describe to you that you have a 339.5 volt AC peak-to-peak -peak output at your wall receptacle, and that you need to divide it by the square root of 2 to get RMS, I think I probably would have lost a lot of the audience. Okay, my target audience here is people that are just starting out that want to have just sort of a basic knowledge of how ants work. This is a step up from that, okay? This is a further enlargement and a deeper look at what's going on in the amp. I really think it's important to get a foundation first and then to build on the details. And just consider this to be that. Uh, it's the foundation, and now I hope we've explained the details. Thanks for watching. Rusty and I are really uh, thankful that you do subscribe and watch our videos, and we hope you stay tuned for more in the future. Thanks. Hey, Rusty. Rusty.